Hey everybody, so welcome back. It's 2017, the start of the new of a new snowmobiling season. I uh, hope everybody liked my hat. Um, little Patriots hat. Um, I'm out in the garage, obviously, and it's about four degrees out. Uh, my garage doesn't have any heat, and as stupid as this thing looks, it's warm as hell. So um, you gotta do what you gotta do when you're working out in the garage to stay warm. So my uh, my first trip is coming up Martin Luther King weekend, and um, I'm actually going to be driving up by myself this trip. Um, I'm meeting my friend up there as well as a couple other uh, uh, other people up there. So what I what I do uh, at the start of every snowmobiling season, um, I actually take 30 minutes in and I go around the trailer and I check stuff out. And everybody should be doing this because the last thing you want to uh, do is neglect to do this stuff and be on the side of the road with an issue and have no way to remedy it and again a lot of the stuff is very basic and anybody can do it and really everybody should be doing this before they go on the road whether it's a half an hour hour six hours eight hours whatever uh, i think you know trailers are probably the most neglected um piece of equipment regarding snowmobiling and they just you know people just expect them to work and you know people will have issues and then you know you're, they're stuck on the side of the road with catastrophic issues so with that being said i'm going to show you what i do and on my trailer and a lot of it is just basic stuff and that anybody can do so with that being said why don't we go ahead and take a look at the trailer and get this started all right so here's a single place trailer that i use primarily and i just brought it inside we had a, a snowfall last night we had about two or three inches of snow so with the trailer, essentially there's really two or three things you really want to check and it's vital that you check it. You know, the first thing is the electrical system. And what you, the first thing you want to do is, you know, go up to uh, your, your uh, four pin flat connector. And what you're gonna to want to do is, you want to make sure this is nice and clean. There's no corrosion. What I do is I take a brass brush and I used to use that brush to clean the uh, the contacts inside and out. I get it nice and clean, all right? Go in, make it, get it nice and clean. Once I'm done with that, what I do is I take some dielectric grease and I, I cover it with the, uh, the the terminals inside and out with it. So what this, what this will do is, this will uh, prevent any water or any uh, corrosion getting into the, to the terminals ensure you have uh, good connectivity on all the uh, you know your running lamps your turn signals and your brakes um, again th the reason why it's called dielectric grease is um, it allows current and, and voltage to pass through it uh, don't be afraid to use it you know that's what it's designed to do so make sure you do that um, you can buy you can pick this stuff up for like a buck or two at any uh, parts store if not sometimes they'll just give it to you for free so that's one thing I do, you know, this is probably the most important thing to do because um, I can't tell you how many times I've gone down the road and I've seen trailers with no lights or malfunctioning lights. And more than likely it all starts here. They just have bad uh, contacts up at the four, four flat connector. So make sure you check that. Next thing you do is uh, check your uh, ball receiver. Uh, make sure you have a linchpin for it. If you don't have a linchpin, you can also use a padlock um, to make sure that, that uh, the ball receiver doesn't come off the hitch as you're going down the road. Again, that is not optional. Um, you need to have that. You know, check your uh, your uh, trailer jack, make sure it's still working, goes up and down as it should. That's easy. Um, presence of a spare. Uh, again, the spare is not optional. You need to have a spare. You never know when you're gonna need it. Um, I've seen people on the side of the road with a flat tire and no spare, and then you know they're they're an hour away from the, the next exit, and they're they're down and out. Um, I've actually seen trailers on the side of the road with no till vehicles with flat tires, and that's all because people don't carry a spare with them. And you know a flat tire can happen at the most inopportune moment. Uh, moment. So again, make sure that you have a spare. Make sure that the spare is inflated. Um, it's holding the, uh, the, the correct pressure and uh, make sure it's good before you take off, right? So the next thing you wanna check, and it's probably the most important thing to do, is the wheels and the wheel bearings, right? 
One thing I do every year is I'll soak down the lugs with penetrating fluid and then I'll back the, uh, the lugs off and then I'll retorque them. And the reason I do that is you want to ensure that in the event that you do have a breakdown on the side of the road for whatever reason, you want to make sure that you can actually get the lugs off. Um, <clears throat> speaking from uh, experience a couple years ago, um, it didn't happen to me, but it actually happened to a friend of mine who I was following up. He, again, he had a flat tire in the middle of 93 in, in New Hampshire and um, the trailer went down on, on one side and so we had to tow it to the side of the road and we went to, and he had a spare. We figured no problem, we'll be in and out in 10 minutes. And what happened was um, we went to go take the lugs off. Four of them came off and then one would not come off and it was just spinning the stud on, uh, on the hub. So what we had to do is, again, this is on the side of the road in, in uh, Nashua, New Hampshire. We had to go find a Home Depot and we bought a four and a half inch angle grinder and a bunch of other tools. And essentially we had to cut the stud off um, on the side of the road um, in the middle of nine, uh, Route 93. So again, you know, if we if he had just backed those lugs off and sp and sprayed them with some penetrating fluid to make sure that they're they weren't going to be frozen up, um, we would have been on the road in ten minutes. Um, but because of that, I think we spent two hours on the side of the road getting that trailer back up and running. All right, the next thing you want to do is take a look at your bearings. This particular trailer has bearing buddies on it, and what there is, you know, there's a rubber cap that this comes off. And then there's a Zerk fitting on it. And what you want to do is, you know, make sure that the uh, the bearings have adequate grease on it. Make sure that they're not running dry or anything like that. Um, the last thing you want to do is uh, neglect those and have a bearing failure. And then uh, again, just like a flat tire, you can have a bearing failure and then you're, you'll be going absolutely nowhere uh, pretty quick. All right, so make sure you do that. If you don't have bearing buddies, um, on the end of the hub, you may actually have a have a cap. You can just take the cap off, and then you have either um, actually, if you don't have bearing buddies, what you have to do is you have to take that cap off, and then you can take the wheel assembly off, take the bearings out, repack them by hand, and go from there. Um, the easier alternative is just go to any trailer store, get a set of bearing buddies, and then just install them into the end of the hub, and then you don't have to do that. So that takes away a lot of the guesswork, right? So after you do that, you know, you check your wheels, you check your bearings. What you want to do is, uh, you know, attach the uh, the trailer to your tow vehicle, plug it in, and make sure all the lights are working. You know, brake lights, running lights, left and right. Because um, if and when you do get pulled over, you're going to get pulled over because of lights. And... Um, if your lights are working, nine out of ten times the uh, the cops aren't going to bother you. But if if your lights aren't working, that is an automatic pullover. They will pull you over every time, even if it's daylight. You know, when I'm pull when I'm towing, I always have my lights on, and I've never had an issue. I've never been pulled over because of a trailer issue. I've been pulled over for a couple other things, but never for a trailer issue. So, so, um, again, I figure I would just pass this along. This is just some of the basic stuff that I do. Uh, and, you know, I always make sure that, you know, the trailer is good to go before I, I leave the, the house. Um, you know, another thing I do is I bring a jack with me. I bring a breaker bar. I bring the, uh, the tools to take the, uh, the lugs off, you know, cause in the event that you are on the side of the road, you know, as long, if you have those tools handy, you know, you can take care of an issue, you know, five or 10 minutes. You know, if you don't have that stuff, that's really when it turns into a, a giant issue. So, all right, guys. So essentially, I figure I would just post this real quick. Uh, hope this help, helps everybody out. If there's any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching. Um, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you like what you saw go ahead and subscribe i'd love to have you part of my community and as always thanks for watching and have a great day